Live from Boston, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering HP Big Data Conference 2015, brought to you by HP Software. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Boston, Massachusetts for HP's special presentation of their Big Data Conference. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Joined my co-host, Dave Vellante, founder of Wikibon.com. And our next guest is Rick Hansen, uh, VP, worldwide VP of sales for HP Software. Uh, 30 years in the security business. It makes kind of sense to kind of connect the dots, software and security. Welcome yep. to theCUBE. Oh, thank you, good to be here. We'd love to have you on. We love security, it's great conversations, but software right now is quote, eating the world, according to Mark Andreessen's famous memo, but really you're seeing software leading all the conversations. Yep. Provisioning infrastructure, big data's a big part of it now, data's part of the application space, so all this is going on. So, what's your view now of the, of the software business in general? Not so much HP, the landscape. Uh, what's changed over the past decade? Well, it's an incredible transformation, right, to the app space. Right? I mean, Apple started with the app, it's all about the app, and how do you secure that app? And you know, you look at it on a consumer level, you know, it's it's about the app. You look at it on a on a, uh, a corporate basis in your infrastructure. What is everyone secure in your critical applications, right? What are we putting up in the cloud? Our critical applications. So I, I think we've now been, come to the point where we're compartmentalizing IT into an application space, and they're they're uh, in, in, because I come from the security space. I think people are actually putting too much uh, information in single apps, and you know, critical apps is critical data and critical risk. And so now, this comes the question of with virtualization, all these new technologies, with DevOps, yeah. with the cloud, you got public, private. It's great space private. to be. Perimeter security does not exist anymore, so we always ask the question, it's like, okay, if there's no perimeter, yep. everything's an API economy, yep. which is great, we love the API economy, but yep. it's like Swiss cheese for the secure bad guys. Secure from the inside, yeah. So wh how, do, how do you guys talk about that? I mean, what's well, you the... secure from the inside, right? It's the, old, it's the old adage when I built a castle, right? What's the first thing I did is I, I, I put a moat Get around a moat, it, yeah. and then I realized I need food, right? Oh shoot, I need a drawbridge. Put the drawbridge down, they delivered me a horse, right? Now I got a Trojan inside my organization. Right, and there was nothing to protect that Trojan once you're in. So I think what's happened through, um, through the evolution of security is we figured out we have to secure from the inside out. Right? And I mentioned the application space because the application space is key to that. And making sure that we're coding effectively, making sure that our application code is, is, uh, is effective, making sure that the data surround us is, uh, is encrypted in the right way um, and, and, and in a smart way is where we really have to focus. And it's, it's the built-in security. Right, and, and now we're, we're actually in a, in a great time because we're rebuilding our data centers. Um, we're, we have a lot of, of, of new, um, new infrastructure coming on, so we can start securing our infrastructures from the inside. I mean, we had this bolt-on mentality, right? Put firewalls around everything. And then we had applications, what did we do? We built an application firewall, right? Makes sense. And it's only going to last so long until we can really take that security inside and start securing it inside. <laughs> But now the queen's leaving her castle more and more. So, <laughs> you, does the security follow the queen? It, 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 it does. And so you're going to have to be smart, right? And so we, you know, we're at a big data conference. It's using the data you have, the data you log, to make smart analytical decisions. And you, know, you, you, you hear that buzzword, you know, predi predictive analytics. And, and predictive analytics and security means if I know what's going on inside, and if I know what's going on outside, because we have a lot of intelligence feeds, I could probably make a pretty smart um, guess on what's going to happen next, and I should be able to secure that. And now with, with, uh, with some of the big data analytics that's, that, that, that we have at our disposal, we can start making even smarter decisions on, on the, the servers to use, servers not to use, where my load is, where my load isn't. So when the queen is gone, we're making decisions that need to be made based on the data. So is that the difference between predictive analytics and prescriptive? Can you break that down? Because that's a nuance that most people overlook. Okay, predictive analytics, we predict something. Right. Prescriptive is, means what? I mean, break that down for us. So pres prescriptive anal analytics is, uh, in my mind, is, is a, I have a process that I'm going to follow, and when I see X, Y is done. 
right? I mean, it's, it, that's what happens by on the on the process flow. In, in predictive analytics, right? It's more machine learning, yeah. and it's more if and why and when and if and and, I, and I'm going to find I'm going to find a this median. This may happen. Some probability. Right, and, and I look for medians, right? And I look for medians, and then I take actions outside the medians. And machine learning certainly is hot now. Insights, they're saying in the market, what well we are and others analysts are saying, I have too many dashboards. I need another dashboard like the hole in the head. So now the focus is on, on, on insights. Right. Actionable insights. Um, what's the state of the union there? What's your, what's your assessment there? So, I, I, I'm going to talk more from a securities perspective yeah. than I am from, I want to know what's going on in my organization. So from a security perspective, on, on a dashboard, and if I, you know, because again, how much data do I have? I'm logging data from everywhere. And I'm looking for that single threat, right? The, the, uh, the, the bad guy can be, right, be, be wrong a hundred times, you can only be wrong one time, right? And so, you know, I, I think you, you look at the, the behavior analytics, whether it's human behavior or machine behavior, and then you, again, you find that baseline and you look for the anomaly above the baseline and you report out on that. Because if, if you look at a large organization, they're going to get you know, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of two billion events a day, and they got to action that down to about 20 uh, to be able to take action on. So it, it comes more manageable, where I only want to see the things that are important to me at a dashboard level, and how do you do that, right? You do that by getting your data and being smart about where the mean line is on your data and only viewing the, the outer part of it. Okay. So, Go ahead. I was at a conference at MIT a few weeks ago and they were talking about this thing called Enigma. And Enigma was inspired by Bitcoin. And when I see Bitcoin, John and I have been talking, you know John, Bitcoin, what the hell is Bitcoin, right? So now. You're talking about Enigma, the, the computer No, tracker? not, not, the, <laughs> not the Alan Turing thing. <laughs> That's but, what I but, know of Enigma, the security guy. But MIT put this project called Enigma, and it's sort of inspired <laughs> by Bitcoin, where everything's encrypted, everything's distributed, there's no third party it's verification. It's blockchain based. Basically. It's a blockchain yeah. based, right. Are we looking at sort of a new era of security where we throw out the old and this new era is ushered in? Are we going to see the evolution of these capabilities? What's your thought on that? So, uh, we have to evolve, right? Because, uh, you know, big surprise, it's not working, right? Nothing we're doing yeah. is working. And, and if you look at, you know, the, the new style of encryption, right? You used to say in the old days, it's encrypt everything. Well, okay, that's real good, but you have to use that data, which means what? I have to unencrypt it, right? And then, then you have all kinds of problems. So now we're using things like format preserving encryption, where, um, where applications can use it without being modified. We're using uh, tokens, tokenization uh, uh, of encryption. So I think we're evolving that way, and that's kind of what you're kind of speaking about, right? It's the same old encryption. It's just being used in different ways and being accessed in different ways because the evolving world, both on the attack spectrum and both on our computing spectrum. And then the other piece, and we talked about analytics earlier, but it came up in the keynotes this, this morning that on average it takes 200 days to, to detect an intrusion. I actually thought it was higher than that, but Young John said it was 200 days. So how... On average, yeah. Yeah, okay, so how do analytics play, right, because the, the bad guys don't want to be found, right? It used to be, yeah, let's make a lot of noise, we're in, boom, virus. Yep. Now it's like, shh, keep it quiet. Stuxnet kind of changed all that. Right, they don't want yeah. you to know you're in. Right, right. so how are analytics being used uh, to improve detection it, and solve that problem? It's looking for the anomaly, right? What What is, what is current state and what is bad state? So that's the first thing we have to figure out, is what does bad state look like? and what does good state look like? And we do that through data, right? Get all the data for six months and you can tell what current state or what right state looks like. And so what we try to do is we try to find, you know, the, the baseline and above or below that baseline. So where is the anomaly? And then take action on the, on the anomaly. So that's where analytics plays a huge role in determining where that baseline is. If we know what good state is over a, over a, a, a certain period of time, it should be easy, easy for us to find out what bad state is. Yeah, and you have those outliers that you couldn't explore in the past. Could not explore, and you're exploring too many. those open new dimensions, like that movie Contact with Jodie Foster, that little, little, little <laughs> small piece of data can blow up into a massive Absolutely. opportunity. I always use that example, yeah. <laughs> it takes my age, but. Uh, um, okay, so let's get back to, uh, go ahead. You say I was going to say, you think of that outliers, right? How long ago was that book Outliers written? I mean, we were talking about outliers for how, and I'll tell you what, it's more real now than it yeah. ever was before. Well, you can measure everything. 
I mean, think about this today. I mean, the, the concept is Sounds historic in, in, yeah. the, in the world of business history. Yeah. You can actually measure everything. <laughs> I mean, that's mind blowing. So now you apply the social change to that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things we hear from customers, it's not so much the technology, it's the process. It's like, I got to train people to think differently. That's right. So that, that is now coming up as the new problem space. Not so much, hey, jam more stuff into Vertica, that's being worked on and going well. But now it's like, wait a minute, I got to train everyone to think differently, whether they're teachers or the boardroom. I mean, so, I mean, you guys seeing that Yeah, as well? it, it, and something that, you know, when I go in and talk to customers, I'm very clear, and I'm a technologist sales guy, and I will always say, people, process, and then technology. That's Dave, that's Dave's you line. You cannot yeah. buy technology yeah. if you don't have the right people or the process to run that technology. You will fail before you get out the gate. And, and, and that's something that I don't think people give enough credence to yeah, yeah. and that we understand. And I think there's a lot of software companies that go in and try to sell software yeah, without jam understanding. Jam it down people's throats. Jam it. So yeah. you, and you know what, you know what that becomes? A lot becomes? of hardware companies. Yeah. Come shelf a lot failure. of services yeah. companies. I mean, that's yeah. just what our industry shelf. does is we jam technology, but well, we used to say we've bloated, learned. Bloated right? software. So but the, the software's thinning out, right? What's right. happening is you have now composite apps, as Colin was talking about. Triple is just on here. You got startups OEMing your engine. I mean, VC back companies, this is tier one VCs. They would never allow that. Build your own, we can't let HP, right, right. oh yeah. But now they can just, it's okay, it's not threatening to their value proposition. Right. So right. total time shift going on now with the, with that investment community. So how does that work for you guys? Because you guys were the ones selling the old solutions, right? So HP, you know, I'm gonna say, well, I'm just gonna say old solutions, but like, you know, the old, go back 10 years. Go back 20, SAP days. Remember the glory days of client server? <laughs> I mean, I mean, those were gravy trains. Six month migrations, planning. Services, yeah. Six years in some cases. See, I, 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 listen, from, from my perspective, and I, and I, I come from security, right? I, I'm fortunate enough to lead all, all sales for software at HP, but I come from security, and security is one thing. Security is services led. You have to have credible, uh, uh, credible solutions. You have to be credible yourself. You have to have confidence and trust in a customer. If you take what, how we sell security, because security is not a product, right? They're buying you as much as they're buying any yeah. type of product you have, because you can only sniff so many packets, right? So if you take if you take that same adage and you apply it to today's software, especially as we're going to cloud-based yeah, and agile. Oh my goodness! Yeah. And, and and you look at it more there, and, and and building that confidence and credibility with a services-led process in people, then technology. I mean, listen, that coming from a sales guy, that's how your deal gets bigger. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Customers are, are going to buy from you. They want to bridge the They're going to buy more from you if you can add value yeah. and you can actually distinguish that value before a piece of code is installed in their server. Okay, so that, how do you guys? How are you handling the sales? You walk in and say, "Put that coffee down." I mean, I mean, what's the sales process look like? I mean, are the sales coffees are closers? Coffee are closers. That's right. Joke ABC, right? Right? ABC yeah. always be closing. That's right. Um, are the sales guys? We have a have Beck, a cape and everything. We have a Beck. Can we get Gary, in, can Glenn we get Glenn Gary, Ross, Glenn Ross comment Google into it. the interview? Coffees for closers. We got it. I would have done it. Yeah. No, but I mean, the sales also have to change. Yeah. So now it's you know, totally oh, different. I sold this product line. I'm monolith. You know, I was a very silent sales guy, so interdisciplinary becomes a pretty big deal now, it, right? It does, right? They're, they buy from me as a human it, as much as they buy from any solution that I'm selling, number one. In, in the old days, right, the sales manager, I've had sales managers said, you know, you sit in that lobby till he comes out, right? You sit in the lobby, wait, wait in your car until he comes out. It just doesn't work today. <laughs> if you don't provide value and you don't educate your customers and you can't build credibility, confidence, and trust that customer, you are not selling that customer software. Yeah. I mean, there's no, and so I spend a lot of time. Trust relationships critical. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I have, you know, I've, again, I came from security, so I have a lot of security contacts in the industry that follow me every, you know, depending on what company I'm at, I call them up, they trust me. Yeah. And, and, and I'm very ethical and high integrity. Those are important parts of sales that don't actually go with sales. <laughs> the word sales yeah. and integrity and ethics don't go together. They have to now or we're going to we're going to go bankrupt. Right? Okay, we so you think sell. about the the big players in, in security. Obviously HP, IBM's there, RSA is there. You know, Symantec actually I heard getting acquired today. That's a different division. No, just the Veritas. Just, yeah. just the Veritas yeah. side. Okay, but still, for those big 3, you got some, you know, major players. How does HP differentiate 
and especially with that game being being trust and up against some trusted partners or well so even better so i i've i've been fortunate enough in my life i i spent 14 years with rsa security mm -hmm. uh, i spent about three or four years with symantec um, one thing that hp has that none of them have are extended value right so when i can go in and talk about let's, let's look we're at a big data conference and i'm going in and i'm talking about the evolution of your data collecting and the evolution to a big data problem, I can now talk about security within that context and offer solutions that are both both for your big big data uh, big data issues as well as your security issues. I can also supply you servers. I can also supply you um, um, your networking gear. Right? I can I can really walk in and solve an end to end problem with that credibility, with that service, uh, services led that I couldn't do anywhere else, right? When I was with RSA and I would go in and talk about encryption or talked about identity management, I was handcuffed to my solution. And I'll tell you what, at HP, we have a pretty wide and breadth solution. And yeah. not only us, it's our partners. We're very partner centric. So we look to our partners to provide even more value. So I might provide some services, but our partner ecosystem will provide that services. So now, you think of the credibility I can provide my customers now, speaking as an as a HP Enterprise employee is, is incredible. Now, do you guys have your own sales force, or is it kind of blended in, or are you guys sharing? So we have our own sales force um, within uh, HP software. And we're about somewhere, you know, 3,500, 4,000 uh, uh, sales strong. Uh, within uh, our globally. organization, globally, correct. Globally. And there's certain accounts where you you, you partner with others, or the named the big accounts. Yeah, we have could, named account where okay. uh, where HP has a a uh, account general manager strategy, right. and we work with that account manager, a GAM, man, uh, a GAM or a GAM. AGM. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we think we call I heard it AGM. Nine yeah. years back in the day, that's right. The GAM was just like, what's a GAM? So so we 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 have at, at large customer, we have points where we all can kind of leverage that, yeah. uh, and others, we you know people like specialty. They you want know, you, expertise. You don't come in and, and it, you know, if you, if you know security and they want to talk big data, you're not the guy. Let's get our big data team in there to go in and, and really give that uh, give that customer what they need. So it certainly helps with having a printer guy go in there. Yeah, that won't work. And so now that's yeah. separated. So the focus is clear. So you got your direct sales force, that's good. Um, you guys hiring, looking for expertise. Always I mean, hiring. I mean, um, listen, there, there's areas where, um, where you can't find enough people. And one is security. And there is not enough security people um, to support the industry and the problems and the issues we have. And now the same is going for our, for our big data infrastructure. Yeah. I mean, knowing people who understand the problem is probably half of it, right? Yeah. And, and, and with that background. So those are the two areas um, where, you know, SEs especially. So your ideal sales candidate is not someone waiting for the guy to leave the office. It's not. It's the customer waiting in his office. If you can't you provide know, the value. The waiting for you, right? right? If you cannot provide value to your customer and to your company, don't okay. apply here. Okay, so what's your goals this year? Okay, you're, you're, you're new to the big role, but right. you're, you have, you've been there, done that on the sales side with security. Now, so the security piece is under software still, right? Yep, so yes. got that in there, so that's yes. going to be a big part of it. Of it. Um, what's the plan, what's your goals for the year? So, so the, the number one is to bring software together. Uh, software was, uh, last year and, and before, it was a lot of acquired companies that have run pretty siloed. So even as far as uh, uh, last year, we have a, a security silo, we have an IT management silo, and we have a big data silo, which used to be Vertica silo and even an autonomy silo. And, and one thing that we're doing, that Robert's doing, um, is bringing those much tighter together and being able to add um, more value to our customers yeah. to be able to walk in and talk a higher story. There's synergies between those oh. groups. Well, there's synergies yeah. And there should be a message that every sales rep in the world, no matter if they're a security, big data, or IT management, they should be able to tell the HP software story. Here's the problem. Here's the software issue. Here's the areas we solve. Oh, by the way, here's what you asked me about in security or big data or yeah. IT management. Yeah. But we have to walk in and we have to educate on the larger software story, our transformation yeah. areas and how those apply. Yeah, Shippa nailed it. I mean, they got a platform strategy, which yep. is very solid, and they have a developer and partner ecosystem. Yep. And so, we see the partners, we're the developers, mostly DevOps, corporate guys. Yep. I mean, they got the startup thing going on, but are you guys see more of that? 
more developers, more engineering? Uh, more, because I mean, we have we have uh, developer solutions, there's right? No, there's no developer conference, not in the classic sense. Correct. It's more, these guys are just in DevOps engineers or cloud or IT guys right. coding away, and then the front end guys with the app guys are kind of cobbled together, right? Right, right. Okay, cool. And uh, what do you think about the conference here? It's pretty cool. I mean, here's the great thing. I'm from Boston, right? And I listen, I travel the world, when, and especially in this new job, I'm gone all the time. So when something pops up, and hey, we got a big data conference in Boston, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in. in. <laughs> yeah, I'm me, in, I'll I'm drive, I'm the same way. <laughs> what do we do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, and, and just to know that, you I mean, they look around, look at the floor, and the partners that are here, and the amount of people, and the excitement, it's, it's pretty cool. It's and pretty they cool got a good mix, they really nailed it. I mean, three, uh, when they, three years ago, when we were here for the first year, it was a rogue operation, it was like Gorilla, you know? Yeah. And, but they wanted to bring the DevOps guys, because a lot of the early Vertica customers were the big DevOps, hyperscalers, yeah. you know, the guys who love the product. So that that's now mainstream, yeah. full stack developers are in big demand, so. And I'm learning a lot of that, yeah. right? This is a learning experience yeah, yeah. for me as well, and, and understanding what the problems are. You live in a security world, I, I understand the concepts of big data, I played in big data, security's a big data problem, right? To totally. Um, yeah. but, but understanding, you know, the in-depths and how it works, and I've been asking people to give me demos, and you know, you're the sales guy, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm learning a lot, it's been great. Rick, thanks for coming on theCUBE, oh, really appreciate awesome. taking the time, thanks for joining us. This is theCUBE live in Boston, Massachusetts. We'll be right back with more from the special presentation of theCUBE at HP's Big Data 2015. We'll be right back after this short break.